Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's episode, we are going to be addressing a quick performance fix for micro studying, as well as showing you guys a cool tool that will solve the problem for you. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so real quick guys, let's talk about on a very high level what micro stuttering is. Micro stuttering is a uh, very short delay in timing between the uh, transmission of data between the CPU and the GPU. So the GPU is ready to go, it's ready to render your frames, but it has these little hiccups waiting for the CPU to send the traffic to it. One of the things that can cause this is what we're going to address today is what we call the CPU priority. Your CPU doesn't just run everything at the same speed and the same priority and the same level. Uh, everything has a certain priority determined by Windows essentially or by your drivers or however, whatever application system you're using that determines its priority. And it's the same thing with uh, when you're making a list for yourself. You know, if you have to go out, you have to get the car changed, you have to get uh, some grocery shopping done, you have to take your kid to the doctor. Well, taking your kid to the doctor is probably a higher priority than getting the car's tire changed. You know, and so it's the same thing. And we have to tell Windows essentially what we want to run at what priority. Most things run by default at what we call normal. And when I say most things, I mean standard applications, applications that we install. There are some that will run at a higher, uh, slightly elevated, um, but uh, those are far and few between. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to change that priority level the first thing that you're going to want to do is I'm actually going to bring my taskbar over here, hopefully, so you guys can see it. There we go. You guys can see enough of it. I'm just going to right click anywhere on the taskbar. We're going to go to the task manager, which, of course, because of my luck, appeared on a different monitor. Give me a second here. There we go. Let's drag it up here. Um, let me get in the seat, actually, because it looks like we're about to be in a bit. Oh, I guess not. Sort of picked probably the wrong airplane to do this with, honestly. I just sort of grabbed one and said, let's fly. Kind of situation. <laughs> actually, you know what? Here, we'll just pause it. There we go. Now, actually, here, let's see if we can actually see any. I probably should have started in a bit more busy area. You're going to see it in higher. And actually, let's do a quick demonstration of that. You're going to see it in higher populated areas is where you would see micro stuttering. Um, places with a lot of buildings, a lot of trees, a lot of uh, activity going on. When you're out here in the boonies that we are now, you can see there really isn't a whole lot of anything going on. But let's take this moment. Let me show you guys an example for those of you who may or may not even be realizing that you're seeing it. And let's uh, go back to the main menu here. And let's pick somewhere a bit busier where we will know that we're going to see it. Let's see here. I'm going to put us down this time in Los Angeles. Let's do that. That's a nice, big, busy area. So we're just going to pop over here. We're going to set our departure. Let's go over to the, well, here, we can even just do this. Hit arrival. Boom. Let's go to our nav log and let's set our initial altitude. I do not want to be at 16,000 feet. Let's set this at about 1,500 feet. Let's double check that that actually it did not. I hate it when it does this. Why does it keep doing that? You're killing me, Smalls. Oh, Microsoft, you drive me nuts. Fine, 1,600 feet. I will take 1,600 feet. Oh, that's why, because it was the backspace button is what I was hitting. All right, now I'm going to double check that one more time. Make sure it took it. It did. All right, good. So let's go fly. And it should load pretty quick. It doesn't normally take very long for me. But this way you guys will actually be able to see, you should be able to see it very clearly even on the screen recording what a micro stutter looks like. Because for example, in micro stuttering, you may not actually see um, a frame rate loss. Um, you could easily 
be at a solid 60 frames per second, 40 frames per second, whatever you're running at. And your FPS looks great, and yet you're stuttering. And this is very likely the cause of a micro stutter. All right, so now we're back in. Let's see what happens when we get into LA. All right, so if you watch, watch the scenery, don't watch the airplane. I've already saw one. And what you'll see is little hiccups. Especially as I get down lower. There was another one, I just saw it. One of the easier places to look is watch right in here. Watch between here and here. There's another one. So it's very, very fast pulses. They happen very quick. And it's just one of those things that at first, when you first start noticing it, you're like, what was that? And then you start seeing it more and more. And then you realize, wow, this is actually becoming really obnoxious. Like, there you go. Now it's happening a lot. Okay. So definitely seeing it now. So now let's go ahead and talk about how to fix it. And you guys have to forgive me. I have a bit of a running nose. Please forgive me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to details. Okay. So we've opened up our task manager. You just simply right click on your task bar, find your task manager. This is for windows 10. I think it's the same for windows 11, but they might've moved it. There's no telling. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find flight simulator .exe. So where are you? There it is. This guy right here. We're going to right click and set priority. This is your CPU priority. And you have these priorities here. Do not ever set it to real time. There are very, very few applications that you would ever set to real time. Uh, real time can very likely crash either the simulator and it may crash your entire Windows desktop. Uh, it may actually crash Explorer. Um, there's all kinds of things that that can do. You rarely, rarely ever would use real time, okay? So we want to set this to high, and then we're going to go back in the sim and watch what happens. And it will pop up, let's change priority, tell it yes. Okay, we're going to come back in here, and we're going to go to resume. Notice the stuttering is almost gone. Now, I always get a little bit of latency because I'm in LA, and I have my graphics set at pretty much everything's ultra. So it's got to render it, it's got to download it, but the overall performance is significantly smoother than what it was before. Um, this isn't a fix all for everything and it doesn't necessarily remove all of the micro stutters, but it certainly helps a lot. This again, this is a very large area. So I always get little stutters out here, um, out Los Angeles, New York, Orlando, places like that. I always get a little bit of stutters and it's because I'm a graphics snob and I keep my graphics settings so damn high that I'm gonna pay the price because of the satellite imagery. And I use live data, um, and I also don't use rolling cache. So everything is brought in and refreshed every single time I fly. So some of it, I ask for it, right? Uh, but I'm a little worried my power settings are too low. I think I'm stalling. Hang on a second, guys. Totally was. There we go. Um, anyway, so now that we've got some power, but you can see that it's not happening near as often as it was. It's not near as obnoxious as it was because I'm still going to hit an FPS loss. Like I would be surprised. I'll bet you I'm not at 30 frames per second over here right now. Um, again, my graphic settings are so high. My view distance is so high and the terrain level of detail is so high. But if you look at that same spot that I told you to look before right in here, you're not seeing the stuttering anymore. You're not seeing that goofy hiccuping that was happening. For FPS loss, I might still be stuttering, but that's due to genuine lack of FPS because of where I am. But you're not seeing the little obnoxious ticks that keep happening off and on that just sort of take you out of the immersion. 
okay? It has smoothed out dramatically since we uh, set the priority. Now, one of the things that can happen that has already been reported to me by some people is that it will actually set itself back after a bit of flying. So I recommend leaving the task manager up for now. However, there is a tool that will do this job for you if you choose. So if you ever notice that you're flying around, long story short, and you've set that high, and all of a sudden the study even comes back, come back in here and double check and see if it's still set to high. Yes, this has to go with, once again, Microsoft liking to tell people where things should be and, you know, we don't get to choose for ourselves. So it runs a poll and it automatically throttles things down. But let's do this. Okay. I'm going to show you guys a nifty tool that a gentleman brought to my attention. Flight Sim Process Prioritizer. This is a very, very nice gentleman that I had the pleasure of uh, emailing with a bit back and forth. He reached out to me, told me about this. Um, and here you go. <laughs> oh, hey, what did he do? Hold on a second. Look at this. So this was actually on my feedback, guys. Upcoming release will allow you to launch your flight sims from one convenient location with a single button and process priority will, of course, automatically be set for you as well. I actually hit him up with that. So this goes to tell you what kind of guy this is. Uh, he had hit me up with the initial application. It's five dollars. Um, and it works for both DCS World currently and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And what it does is it sets the priority for you, okay? You simply give them, a, shoot them a, a little bit of cash, guys, to help them out. Everybody's uh, effort should be appreciated there. But, and you might think, oh, five bucks for something like this. Trust me, when we're talking about, like you guys saw, and I just told you, it may very easily switch itself back. Um, having an application that monitors that for you and takes care of it for you is very, very handy. Now, hang on a second. I will also pull it up so you guys can see how easy this works. So here is the folder that I have it in. Now I am going to run this out as an admin. I don't think it's required. It doesn't say in the instructions. It's just because of what it's doing. I'm going to set it there. So I'm going to go ahead and run as admin. And of course it put it on the other screen because it doesn't like me. Give me a break. Here we go. And there it is, that's it. This is all that pops up. You hit the executable, you see this, and you're up and running, okay? So very, very simple application. I like that he's going to do this. It's going to, uh, he is, again, creating a uh, an option where all we'll have to do is click a button and it will launch Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as set the priority. So that's pretty awesome. Really appreciate it of uh, him taking my advice on that one. That's kind of cool. So I know this was sort of a winded video for such a simple fix, but uh, I do I did want to make sure that everyone understood a what a microstarter was, so they knew whether or not is this genuine FPS loss. Now this can help you in any FPS situation, okay? But uh, do not try to go above high. Remember what I said about that. That is very very important, you guys. Um, never ever 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 set it to real time, please. Um, I can confirm just from testing because that's what I do for you guys. It will absolutely crash Microsoft Flight Simulator. At least it did for me 10 out of 10 times um, kind of situation. I think it was three. Um, so it wasn't just a fluke. It absolutely dumped it. Um, and uh, in some cases, it can actually reduce the performance. So like there was a little bit of lag right there. Let's go ahead and see what it's doing right now. Let's come back in here and see if that has changed. Nope, still set on high. Excellent. But uh, anyways, guys, so that's going to be the long and short of the video. The link to that really awesome tool will be down in the description below. Make sure you guys check that out. Again, I think it's absolutely worth it for five bucks, especially with the convenience of soon to be able to launch the simulator directly from it on the next release. And uh, I just mentioned that to him today, and it looks like he already put the GUI together for it. So obviously it's happening very quick. Um, so the guy's on it and, uh, it'll be, especially for someone who, if you guys don't feel comfortable messing around or you don't want to dig through the task manager, that'll be a real handy tool. Um, and this is one of those issues that unfortunately does pop up pretty frequently with Microsoft flight simulator. So I think it'd be nice to have on hand. Um, you guys know that there are plenty of applications that I shoot down and I say, nah, not really worth it. Um, so, but this one, I think for the convenience of it and, you know, at five US dollars, I think that's more than fair for what it does. And uh, for the convenience alone, I'm definitely excited to have it. And even though he gave me the copy of the initial, I will be buying the next version. Um, Cause uh, that's a, uh, that's very awesome. It's always nice when someone takes your suggestions and takes them literally as, as a simmer. All right, so we had a few more there. 
before we end the video, I'm going to double check one more time and we're just going to verify that that hasn't changed. Nope, didn't change. So again, that's just genuine FPS loss because of the way I have my graphics set. So like I told you guys in the beginning, when I came out to LA, I was asking for it. As always, guys, I hope you appreciate this video. I hope you found some useful information from it, learned a thing or two, and found yourself a nice, cool tool. It is Friday, so I hope you guys all have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for more videos coming your way. Um, the lagging that you guys are seeing on the screen right now, believe it or not, is not happening in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That is my display settings doing that, or uh, display monitoring, uh, recording, whatever the hell it's called. So uh, don't worry about that. That was not legit. But uh, anyway, as always, guys, catch you in the next one.